Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to the video. In this video, we're going to talk about everything that you need to know when landing in Korea. So make sure to sit down, fully watch this video, write everything down, because everything is equally important, and if you're missing one thing, it'll be very inconvenient or your trip won't happen. So please watch this video. And a quick disclaimer, please do your own research. There, maybe there's other things as well, but for me, this was everything notable that could have or did cause an issue for my trip. So please be aware of that, but it's also your responsibility to be aware of it. I'm just providing information and sharing what happened for me, what worked for me, what was inconvenient, and what could have been inconvenient if things didn't go well. So please be careful. So there are some things that you need before you go to Korea, like a valid passport, the k eta and the Q code. So I made a video about that already. I'll put a card up here and it'll also be recommended at the end of this video. So you can just look at filling that out. So technically, both of those things aren't required anymore, but during my trip, which was like two weeks ago, they took both of them. So I recommend that you do them. I have more information in that video, so go check that out. So once you're actually in Korea, what do you need to do? So before you go, I would recommend that if your phone is compatible, get an eSIM. If it's not compatible with an eSIM, you can buy a physical SIM card at the airport. I don't know how much it costs because I did the eSIM route, but I do recommend that you get an eSIM, it's very convenient. I used Airlo. They have a regional SIM card, which is what I use because I went to Japan and Korea. Basically across like 18 countries in Asia, you'll get data. So I bought this one simply because I went to both countries, it was convenient. But actually, I got about 5 gigs of data for 30 days, which was not a, enough actually. So I ended up buying the infinite data plan that they had in Korea for 10 days, which was like 40 bucks. But I didn't have to worry about internet, because I was using about 600 megabytes every day. So like almost, almost a full gigabyte. So. I do recommend that you get the infinite data plan. That way you can just do whatever you want. You don't have to worry about it either. Not sponsored. That's just my experience. I was kind of worried and stressing about running out of data. Also, before you go, highly recommend that you download a neighbor, which is basically the Korean Google. So you definitely need neighbor because Google Maps, it does not really work. It won't even give you the option of walking places if you use Google Maps. It may have the train and bus schedule, but it won't help you walk anywhere. So you need neighbor maps, it'll actually tell you where to walk. Neighbor only works in Korean actually. Like you can have the layout in English, but what you need to do is get the Korean name. So it's kind of an extra step, but it's not actually that bad. So what you do is you go into Google Maps, you find the place that you want to go, you search it in Google Maps, you find the place, you click it, and now you'll see that it has the name and then it has the Korean name as well. So you copy the text, you paste it in Neighbor, you delete the English, and then you just click the part that's in Korean. And then at that point, you know where you need to go, so you just follow the map like normal. If you can use your credit card in Korea, I recommend that you do that as long as you don't have to pay excessive fees for having the conversion rate occur because a lot of things in Korea don't work with cash actually. Like there's several restaurants for where I couldn't go in because they only took card, they would not accept cash and I personally found that really inconvenient actually because I didn't really want to use a credit card. I didn't want to pay the fees. I was worried about if it would be stopped by my bank it was just kind of a lot of things to worry about. Like you can set up Samsung Pay, but it's still just connected to your credit card anyway. Make sure that you can use a credit card that'll convert to Korean, doesn't have a lot of expenses, and your card won't be blocked because it's being used in a different country. So that's kind of the biggest headache you need to deal with, I think. I wanted to rent a bike, but I could not do that for the life of me anywhere because everywhere needed a credit card which I just could not personally use. So I could only use cash, but they would not take cash, which was unfortunate. So when you actually land in Korea, 
what do you need to do? You need to get a tea money card. As soon as you land, you can go into the basement and there's a vending machine. You spend 5,000 won, which is about $5. You get the card and then directly beside the machine, there is another machine where you can put cash into it to load it up. I put $100 on my card, which was about 100,000 won, and that comfortably lasted me eight days. I had about 30 or 40,000 won at the end. At the end of your trip, you can refund the money that you have on your T-Money card as well. So you can do it at a GS25, the CU convenience store, the 7-Eleven, Mini Stop, He's Smart 24 so you can refund it at a lot of places actually. So I personally took my card into the airport and there was a GS25 while waiting for my flight. So if you're all the way at the end of your trip, you can refund the money. But they only refund 20,000 won. So if you have 30,000 won on your card, you're going to have to make some purchases at the convenience store to get your balance below 20,000 and you can then refund your card. And then the fee they charge for refunding your card is 500 won, which is about 50 cents. When you're going from Incheon to Seoul, you can take a taxi. It's between 45,000 won upwards of 100,000 won. It really depends on a lot of factors. So you can ask the driver how much. I actually did and I was refused service so I had to get a different driver. That was fun but the second guy was nice. Uh, for me it ended up being about 52,000 won. So it was about $52. It wasn't too bad. But you can get an airport ticket shuttle bus and it's about $15 which is about 15,000 won which isn't too bad. But because I didn't have a credit card, I couldn't buy it at the terminal. I could only buy it in cash with the teller. So going from the airport to Seoul was very easy actually. It was just like a one hour ride to my station. And then my hotel was like five minutes from the stop. But then when I had to come back to the airport, it was actually way harder because I didn't have the credit card. So I couldn't actually buy the airport limousine bus ticket to go back to Incheon, which was something that kind of stressed me out a lot. I couldn't buy the ticket because I didn't have the card to use the machine, and I couldn't find an English help center or even any staff anywhere to even just show the Papago translation to to say, hey, I need to buy this ticket, where can I go? So I was in Suwon at that time, so what I did was I took the train to Seoul and I still couldn't find any staff, so I was kind of stressed out. So outside of the station, there's a little lineup for taxis, so I ended up needing to spend the $52 or so to get a taxi from Seoul to Incheon. So because there was no staff and I couldn't buy a ticket with my card, I couldn't take the airport bus back to the airport. So that's something you wanna be aware of. In case you find yourself in that same situation, you can try to like pre-buy a ticket just so you have a way to get back already. But if you don't do that, or if they don't let you for some reason, just have like an extra 100,000 won for your last day in case of emergencies just so you can get a taxi back to the airport if you have to. Also, make sure you have Papago, which is a translation app. It'll pretty much save you and if you don't speak Korean, it's mandatory. A lot of places actually have no English signage and they don't speak English at all whatsoever. Hi, this is me a week later with wet hair. But anyway, you also need to get a Type F charger like converter so it's something that you can buy online you can also buy these in korea at most convenience stores i bought mine at the hotel i think it was seven dollars it was about seven thousand one so it's not like crazy expensive but you do need this to be able to plug in and charge your stuff something to point out is some cafes and restaurants will actually let you charge your phone some convenience stores too actually so like you can go there and for example, you can like eat your instant ramen or something at the convenience store while you pay like a $1 fee sometimes for free to the convenience store owner and they charge your phone for you. So it can be like they'll just 
plug it into your phone and it's behind their table or they'll give you like a little wireless charger that they let you borrow so personally i only had to do that once i charged my phone at a cafe they just gave me a little wireless charger to plug in and here's another one it's actually true most toilets in korea you cannot flush toilet paper down some of them you can but a lot of them you can't so usually there's going to be signage up telling you that you can or can't if there's no signage at all there's probably a little garbage can beside the toilet that's what it's for so don't flush toilet paper down that toilet it goes into the little garbage can it actually doesn't even smell that bad honestly that is just something to be aware of don't clog the toilet because that'll be a bigger issue to deal with also if you're out and about on your travels i recommend that you just have an extra roll of toilet paper and also an extra little bit of soap in your backpack or just on you however you're traveling for example if you're at your hotel they usually give you like two rolls of toilet paper take one with you in your backpack because like it is part of like the fee that you're paying and i couldn't really just find individual rolls of toilet paper at convenience stores just take the roll like you've paid for it by just having your hotel room and just keep it in your backpack just in case of emergencies and then realistically if you never use it just put it back it's fine so that's something that i would recommend it's something i did i just brought the toilet paper with me in my backpack <laughs> I never used it, so I put it back. Just uh, keep an extra roll of toilet paper with you. Highly recommend that. And again, keep a little container of soap with you as well, because not every bathroom has soap. So just be aware of that. Something worth noting is most of the showers that I saw in Korea were wet rooms. So pretty much what that means is like the toilet was in the exact same area as the shower head. The floor is gonna get wet, and then it just air dries so just be aware of that it's just something worth noting it's a little bit different probably i don't know but for me it was a little bit different i'm also going to put links down to most if not all of the resources i talked about like i'll have a link to papago i'll have a link to the kata and the qr code obviously of course you can just go find it yourself i'm just putting it down there for convenience so I'm not sponsored, but everyone who has an Aerolo account gets like a link that they can share like with friends or whatever for where they do get a kickback. I'll put that link down below and that way like if you're going to use Aerolo, you can use my code. Basically you'll get a small discount and then I'll get a small amount of money given to me as well. I think it's the same. Whatever discount you get, that's what I also get as a credit on my account that I could then use towards getting an Aerolo sim myself later so i'm just going to put that down below you can choose to use it if you want to if you do choose to buy an aerolo sim card an aerolo e-sim card and you choose to use my link i'm also going to link to like the eligible phones so just make sure your phone's actually eligible to use the card as well okay so just a quick recap of everything that you need you need to have a valid passport that won't expire you need to have the kata and the Q code completed. Technically, you don't need those two, but you should just do it. I highly recommend it because I ended up using them even though I technically didn't need them. So I guess you do need them. It's just kind of a weird gray area. Just do it. It only takes like five or 10 minutes. The Kata may take a business day or two before they return it to you and you have to pay like nine American dollars for it. So just be aware of that. Have Papago translator app. It'll save you. It's literally required, especially if you don't speak Korean. Five, get neighbor maps. So you need that to go anywhere. You're not going to go anywhere without it. You can kind of use Google Maps to get somewhere, sort of, but as soon as you have to walk, it's just not going to work very well. Like, it can kind of guide you along, but it won't show you a path. You kind of just have to figure it out and hope you're going in the right direction. So get neighbor maps and learn how to use it. When you land, have an eSIM if you can because it's convenient. If not, they sell SIM cards in the airport, so you can go buy one there. I don't know how much they cost. I didn't buy it. I didn't look because the eSIM was pretty affordable and more convenient and my phone was eligible. And number seven, buy the T-Money card and then load it up. You're going to need it. It's pretty much required. Eight, go buy your ticket to go from 
the airport to wherever your hotel is in Seoul because most people go to Seoul. Maybe you're in Incheon, I don't know. But chances are if you're going to Korea, you're going to Seoul. So you need to have that figured out already. To fill out your Kayeta, you need to have like the address of your first hotel. Same with your Q code as well, I believe. After that, also always have your passport on you. You need to have your passport on you at all times, so never go anywhere without it. That's just something you should know, that's a law. 10, make sure you have at least 100,000 won for your last day in case of emergencies, in case you need to get a cab to get back to the airport. You don't wanna miss your flight and then now it's costing you thousands of dollars. I was freaking out on my last day, honestly, because I couldn't get a ticket for the airport limousine anywhere, which was really upsetting. So I ended up needing to get a taxi. And some taxis may not want to provide service to foreigners. Very first taxi that pulled up for me declined service to me, even though I had the address. So I had to get the second taxi, which was fine and it went smoothly. And it's pretty affordable in comparison to other places. But just be aware of that. Try to give yourself as much time as it takes and then maybe add an extra hour on top of that in case things go wrong and then 11 you can refund your team money card and you can even do it at the airport so if you have some extra money on it don't worry about it but you can only refund it if it's less than 20,000 won so if you have like 30,000 you're gonna have to spend 13 dollars at the gs25 in the airport which is actually harder than you might think <laughs> so i ended up eating so much food there just so I could get it down to below 20,000 won so that I could refund it and they charged a 500 won fee just so you know. 12. Make sure you have your type F converter so that you can actually charge your phone. 13. Make sure you have toilet paper and soap on you and also just be aware that you have to put the toilet paper in a separate garbage 90% of the time. I only saw like literally two toilets that would let you flush paper down the toilet so please be aware of that I'm just point this out i didn't say this in the rest of the video so it's good that you're watching this right now when you get cash if you're going to get cash i highly recommend you do not get it in the country where you're coming from get it in korea so what i mean is in canada if you order one at least for me my rate was like 751 per dollar which is pretty awful <laughs> it's a really bad rate when i was in japan i looked and it was about 800 won per dollar which is still not great and then actually in korea it was about 900 won per dollar so way better way better actually closer to what it should realistically be even if you just go into the airport in korea the rate's not awful it's pretty decent actually just get like a couple hundred in cash there and then you can go into like a bank or an exchange place if you like to get money uh, there's a lot of exchange places in korea though actually but realistically i don't know like i would probably either do it at the airport or do it at a bank i wouldn't really recommend going into a random street vendor who just does an exchange because realistically you don't know how legitimate it is so do it at the Korean airport or do it at a Korean bank. You'll get the best rates there and a reasonable expectation that you're not getting ripped off and it's actually real money. So that's just something I wanted to say. So again, quick disclaimer, make sure you do your own research. This is just a general overview of how my experience was in Korea, everything I wish I knew, everything I learned, and everything that I knew before going. So hope you found it helpful. Have a safe trip and have fun and do your own research more as well. Just make sure that you fully understand everything. So thank you for watching. Have a good day. Bye bye.